All right, let's study the presidency of Bill Clinton in 1992, featured Republican candidate George H.W. Bush running against the Democratic nominee Bill Clinton out of Arkansas. This election also featured Ross Perot, independent candidate, um, very wealthy candidate as well, organizing people at a grassroots level, at a local level. Um, Perot was on the ballot in all 50 states, does quite well in the, in the 1992 election. Bill Clinton will go on to win with only 43% of the popular vote, three over uh, 370 electoral votes all in all. Democrats will be in control of Congress. Billionaire Ross Perot, kind of interesting stat here. Um, as far as independent candidates goes, he was the most successful one since Teddy Roosevelt and the Bull Moose Party back in 1912, winning nearly 20% of the popular vote. It's a pretty interesting moment right there coming out of the days of the Persian Gulf War and so forth. So interestingly about Bill Clinton, yes, he's a Democrat, but he also had many um, aspects of Republican beliefs. Um, and so he's kind of a mix between liberal and conservative as well, called himself a new Democrat. And I'll show you a couple ways that he was also um, sort of a conservative. So proposed a plan to guarantee affordable health care for all Americans, very liberal. Republicans in Congress said it was big government. Um, his wife, Hillary Clinton, will push a lot of health care reforms as well. So we see that as very liberal. And, and big government as well. Uh, so one of the biggest failures of Clinton's time in office is that health care was not overly changed. Conservative politics, what did he believe in? Worked with Republicans to reform the welfare system, placing limits as to how long people could receive benefits, allowing states to decide how welfare money would actually be spent as well. He also worked with Congress to reduce the federal deficit and balance the federal budget. So he was quite successful with that. Take a look at some of the graphs, the info with that. So in 1997, Clinton cut, cut government spending and lowered taxes in a big way. The first time in 30 years, the government had a surplus, which Clinton used to pay down the nation's debt. I think kind of interesting stats as we click through the rest of it, as far as deficits, percentage of GDP by administration. You can see Clinton was very, very successful in that, in that sense. Clinton's deficit reduction coincided with a boom in the technology industry and it led to the longest sustained era of economic growth in U.S. history going into the 1990s as well. The sale of American-made goods abroad had been essential to American prosperity, but by the 1970s, however, there was an increase in serious, uh, there was a serious increase in trade deficits. Americans purchased more from foreign nations than American industry and agriculture sold abroad. So. The solution for Bill Clinton was in 1994 proposed what is what becomes known as NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, inter increasing international trade. Canada, the U.S., and Mexico joined in a free trade zone. American manufacturers increased trade with Canada and Mexico, and so that's a, seen as a big accomplishment uh, of Clinton's time in office. According to the cartoon, think about it. Since we're in a push, what would be some of the criticisms for those who think that NAFTA would not be such a great thing? Um, and not, not, not such a good thing for in direction for our country to be heading into. What do we get from these other nations? So the surging increases in trade, communications, and the movement of capital around the world during this era were key parts of the process of what we call globalization. Globalization promoted the development of global and regional economic organizations. For example, you'll see the rise of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, overseeing trade agreements, enforcing trade rules, and settling disputes. There is a World Bank making loans, supervising economic policies of poor nations with debt troubles. The G8 is going to be developed during this time period as well. Some of the largest industrial powers meeting and making very important decisions, talking about the affairs of the world. The G8 controlled two thirds of the, new, of the world's wealth and remained the world's leading economic powers. So very interesting that the United States has definitely has, always, has been seen as a, as a major world leader. But now uh, we're joining together with many others as part of the GA. So workers and unions in the richest nations often resented globalization because they lost their jobs to cheaper markets in the developing world. That's what you get with the, the capital system. You're going to be looking to make the most profits without having to pay um, in the early to pay as little as can. Um, technological advancements. This is the rise of uh, internet and dot com businesses like eBay and Yahoo and Google and AOL, America Online. Um, and so there's a, um, a big, big uh, increase in that area. Um, you also have the first cloned domestic animal. It's sheep, Dolly the sheep. Um, pretty interesting moment as well. Despite all of his achievements, 
Clinton faced a lot of opposition by Republicans, in particular um, Newt Gingrich in Congress, creating the contract with America in which Republicans promised 10 major changes. The changes included lower taxes, term limits for members of Congress, and a balanced budget amendment. For the first time in 40 years during Clinton's time in office, Republicans will actually regain control, gain a majority in both houses of Congress, and that will give him trouble later on. Prior to the 1996 election, Clinton and the Republicans worked together to pass Health Insurance Portability Act to improve health coverage. And then also the Welfare Reform Act, which we discussed earlier, limiting people to no more than two consecutive years on welfare and required them to work to receive um, benefits as well. 1996, Clinton runs against Bob Dole for the Republicans, and there you have Ross Perot running for the Reform Party one more time. The death. Um, during Clinton's time, during his administration, America fa is faced with many different um, situations that, that are quite disturbing to, to several uh, cities and several uh, and several other areas around the, our country. So you're going to see lots of violence. For example, race riots hit Los Angeles in 1992 when four white police officers were acquitted of police brutality in the Rodney, Keith, Rodney King uh, beating case. You also see during this time period race riots. There you have it there. Weird. This is also the time period of the um, Oklahoma sitting bombing in 1995 with Gulf War veteran Timothy McVeigh. 168 people died in the Oklahoma City bombing. Federal building was bombed by him. This is also during the time period where you're going to see the Columbine shooting. And so there are uh, great victories and then there's great uh, there's great moments of sadness during Clinton's time in office. <laughs> Um, but Clinton also had a few scandals kind of plaguing him in the background. In 1998, a scandal involving Clinton threatened his presidency, for example. In his first term, Clinton was accused of arranging for illegal loans to whitewater development. Um, the scandal stemmed from a failed real estate investment, investment for which the Clintons were alleged to illicitly profited. Attorney General Janet Reno appointed an independent counsel, Kenneth Starr, to investigate the president. It's not the last time you've heard that name. David Hale accused the president and first lady of forcing him to loan money for a failed Little Rock state venture while Clinton was the Arkansas governor. And so there have been rumors and whispers that he had been involved in legal uh, situation before, but in early 1990, a news scandal broke out during his time in office when a personal relationship with a White House intern named Monica Lewinsky suggested that he had committed perjury or he lied under oath about the relationship with her. Um, Kenneth Starr once again appointed to investigate this. In his report, he argued that Clinton had obstructed justice, abused his powers president, and that he had committed perjury when questioned about it. So in 1998, the House passed two articles of impeachment against Bill Clinton. On February 12th, 1999, the senators cast their votes with the result of, uh, with the result ultimately uh, being short of the two thirds needed to remove Clinton from office. Although Clinton was not removed from office, his reputation will be damaged from here on. <laughs> So also um, on, a, on a worldwide level, you have a crises over in Yugoslavia, split apart from in 1991 after the end of communism. In Bosnia, through a civil war, breaks out between Orthodox Christian Serbs, Catholic Croatians, Bosnian Muslims. The fighting continues in 1995. The Serbs would not stop their attacks and began calling for ethnic cleansing, expulsion of an ethnic group from a geographic area. And the U.S. convinced NATO allies the intervention was necessary, resulting in NATO warplanes attacking the Serbs. The Clinton administration had arranged for peace talks in Dayton, Ohio, and a peace plan was signed to end that conflict called the Dayton Accords as well. You also have a conflict over in Kosovo between um, two major ethnic groups, Serbs and Albanians. Serbian treatment of Kosovo Albanians angered people around the world. Leaders tried unsuccessfully bring the sides together. So in 1999, NATO began bombing Serbia. Serbian troops later pulled out of Kosovo. So now we're edging closer to the famous election of 2000. And it's going to be a close one as Bill Clinton is leaving out of office. Um, he, the man chosen to, to run for the Democrats will be Al Gore. We're going to have against Republican candidate George W. Bush. Keep this in mind about Bill Clinton. He was impeached. He was not removed from office. And going back to way back to the days of Andrew Johnson, same situation. He was impeached. He was not removed from office.
Okay, I hope that was super helpful. Please let me know if you still have a lot of, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help out. Thanks for watching.